All right. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Holics Podcast. This is our Major League Baseball edition, and we are in the middle of our team mini series, and this is going to be our seventh installment. And today we are talking about the Chicago Cubs. Uh, my name is Jordan Jica, and I'm here with my co host, Rye Dog. What's going on today, big guy? What's going on, J Dog? I'm ready to rock and roll today, so I'm going to hop right into it. And, uh, before I do, make sure you subscribe to us. We have a ton of content rolling out, NFL, MLB. Uh, once the other sports get rolling, we'll have some content there as well. But we'll start off with the Cubs here, and we're going to hop into their lineup to begin with. And starting right at the top, we have Chris Bryant, who is going to be most likely leading off for him. He's going to be playing third for him, obviously. Uh, he's going around pick 42 and a half right now. Um, seems pretty reasonable to me, but what are your thoughts on Chris Bryant this year? I mean, he's your average um, third baseman, I think. You know, he's Chris Bryant. He doesn't really ever surpass expectations, but he also doesn't really go below expectations. I mean, 42, it would depend who else is there for me. I mean, I would take him if I had my two outfielders and my second or second baseman or first baseman or whoever. But it's not a guy I'm going to reach for. But it's not going to. Uh, he's not a guy I'm not going to let slip either. Yeah, no, and I'd probably take him a round or two later. And I think that's he's very consistent. You know what you're getting out of him. You're going to get 280, 30 home runs. Top of the Cubs lineup, he's going to probably touch around 100 runs. I think he had like 109 runs scored last year. Not really going to steal you a ton of bases. I, I think my biggest issue with him going in that spot is that when you look at other third basemen and where they're going. I would rather take Josh Donaldson or Matt Chapman even around pick 90, you know, 8, 9, 10th round. You're getting those guys right now. And I think I'd rather have them in that spot than Chris Bryant in the fourth, fifth round. And I think that's my problem with him. No, nothing against him as a player. You know, obviously he's former MVP, very consistent. But uh, I, I think the value of it isn't there. I think that's reasonable, but I'm always looking for value. I agree. It's all about value with the early picks. You know, get what you get, what you can get, and but I mean, third basements are typically deep. You got your top twelve, you can get. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And then right behind him, we have Anthony Rizzo playing first for him. He's going right around pick sixty right now. Um, to me, I, I said he's the consolation prize for first baseman. You kind of have those top three guys that go in the top thirty, thirty-five picks. And then a round or two later, you have Rizzo. Once again, you're going to get a good average out of him, high run production. Um, you know, if you miss out on those top few guys, it's once again, it's one of those picks. I think it's reasonable for him. Do I think it's great value? Probably not. But uh, what do you think about Rizzo? I like Rizzo. Um, he's consistent as they come. He, he's one of those guys that actually does it all, aside from, you know, stolen bases, of course, but not many first basemen steal bases anyway. But... You know, if you miss out on your Bellingers, your Alonzos, your Freemans, you know, and if he's there, I'm going to take him. Um, I'm not going to let Rizzo go and risk it for Matt Olson, who I do like. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know what you're getting out of Rizzo. He all His numbers are there. He's a 290, 280 hitter, 25 to 30 home runs, 90 to 100 RBIs, 80 to 100 runs. So, I mean. You can't beat that consistency. Yeah, no, and I think first base overall is pretty shallow this season, and that's why I don't have a problem taking a first baseman early. And, uh, I mean, you're going to get good production. It's not really a risk. Um, and then right behind him we have Javier Baez playing short for him. He's going around 30th overall right now, so I'm going to let you talk about Baez first. Okay, I mean, I don't mind Baez. Round 30, is it's a little high for me. And I say that because last year he had his second base eligibility. Mm -hmm. I believe he had second, third, and short, Yeah, if I'm not wrong. And at that value, you know, you can plug him in anywhere when other teams on your roster's off, et cetera. But I believe now he's only shortstop eligibility. Short. And yep. I'm not, he doesn't steal many bases either. So we talked about it in a previous episode you know, we talked about our Tatises, well, mainly Turner, et cetera. You know, I'm, I'm going to take Turner early just because he steals a good 30 bases more mm -hmm. than Baez. Granted, Baez hits, you know, more home runs, but, you know, he hits about, what, 10 home runs more, if that. 
Yeah, right around so, 10. Yeah. I want to take the all five categories for me, in my opinion, and I'll let I'll let someone else take bias, but I mean, if he had his second base eligibility, I think we would be talking about a different story here. Yeah, no, and I agree with that because second base is so shallow. So if you, you could grab him as your second baseman, that would have huge value. But I've talked about it in previous episodes before. I think the shortstop position is very deep right now. Um, so taking him as my third, I'd rather take, you know, one of my top outfielders there or even one of the elite first basemen over Baez. I mean, he'll get you, you know, 10 to 15 steals, not a ton. His average is average, uh, you know, 30 home runs. Obviously, he's in a good lineup, but I just feel like where he's going, it's too high right now. Um, And I'd personally pass on him. You know, I'd probably put him around that maybe fifth round. You know, he's going right around the third right now. So I'd put him a few rounds back. I'd be more comfortable taking him. But in that spot, I think it's a little high. Um, Then batting right behind him is Kyle Schwarber. He's going pick 152 right now. Um, You know, that's another guy. I think there's a bunch of outfielders going a little later right now around pick 125, 150, right in that range that offer a lot of power. Framio Reyes is another guy that comes to mind. Uh, Nick Castellanos uh, as well. He doesn't offer as much power as Schwarber, but I think it kind of depends how the first half of your draft goes. If you have a ton of speed, high average, I think Schwarber is a guy you can afford to take a chance on because really all he's going to offer is power and uh, and some RBI. So if you're looking for that later in the draft, I think that's a good option. But if you already have a ton of power from the early part of your draft, I think he's a guy that you have to skip over. I mean, I agree. And he's, he's in a good spot for some reason. He's batting clean up. I mean, I don't know why, yeah. but <laughs> usually you would have like a guy like Rizzo or Bryant pitting at third hole and then Baez would hit clean up. But nonetheless, it's a good spot in the lineup that you could take a chance on them or I would, I mean, at that late in the round and, you know, you, you have guys like Baez, Rizzo, Bryant, who are all more than capable of getting on base because they're their whole offense. So, I mean, yeah, you know, he's a guy that could put, uh, potentially drive in one, two runs a game. So why not? For sure. And right behind him, we have their catcher, Wilson Contreras. He's going at pick 115 approximately right now. He's the fourth catcher off the board. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I, mean, I like Willis and Contreras. Um, I, I like him a lot because you got to think after uh, the Riz, I mean, after the uh, Real Mutos and the Sanchez's, he's arguably the third best catcher for fantasy purposes. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, he's hitting in uh, front of uh, behind Schwarber. I mean, If Contreras was hitting in that cleanup spot, I mean, I would love it a lot because I think Schwarber has more of a chance of getting out in the first inning and then maybe Rizzo does. So, you know, it doesn't leave Contreras with much availability to drive in runs. Not as much as Schwarber, at least, but I would still take him as my third catcher. And if he falls at the right price, I'll take him. Like I said in previous episodes, I don't mind taking my boy Will Smith or Wilson Ramos, or guys like that, much later. Yeah, no, and that's my only problem with him right now. And, you know, he's going to put up 20-plus home runs, probably driving 65, 70, or uh, 20 to 25 home runs, 65, 70 RBI. So really good numbers offensively for a catcher. But um, I like Will Smith a lot, too. You've mentioned him before. He's going 40 picks after Contreras right now, which, you know, that's pretty significant to me. And that's where I start looking at, you know, once again, value. And if I can grab a guy that's going to have similar or better production three or four rounds later, I'll take that every single day. So, and I think there's a lot of catchers that can provide a little bit of pop. Um, You know, even if a lot of them aren't going to provide any sort of average, but I think there's quite a few catchers that can get you 20 home runs. And um, I personally wouldn't take them there, but I think it's a fair price for them. I agree. Um, And and the Dodgers also have a well, uh, well well-rounded lineup. Yep. Heavy offense, more so than the Cubs. So, you know, I, I would definitely wait if I had the opportunity. Yeah, and kind of speaking of have not having a heavy offense, uh, the back end of the Cubs lineup, when you look at it, it's pretty weak overall. <laughs> Number six, they have Jason Hayward right now. Number yes. seven, they have Jason Kipnis. Um, I don't really know if he's going to be playing second. They have him listed right now in their starting lineup, but 
I'd imagine they give uh, their prospect there, Nico Horner, more of a chance. Uh, then eighth, they have Ian Happ, who I'm going to talk about a little bit just because I know he's been a trendy name for later pick in the draft. But uh, they have him batting eighth right now. Uh, he's going around pick 235, so really undrafted or one of those dart throws at the end of the draft. Uh, he's had a very dominant spring. He's shown the ability to hit home runs, and he has good pop. But the problem is he's never really gotten consistent playing time. So he's a guy that I'd take a, a throw a dart at late in the draft and kind of watch if he's getting good playing time, you know, keep him on your roster. And if not, really no harm, no foul. So a- any thoughts on the uh, back half of the lineup here for you? Oh, yeah. After our, the three guys you mentioned, uh, Kipnis, the uh... Hayward and the half. If I had to take a dart throw on one of them, I'm definitely taking a dart throw on half because let's talk about Kipnis. I mean, he was definitely good with his time with the Indians. No doubt in mind, definitely a starting second baseman for fantasy once upon a time, a half a decade ago. I mean, at this rate, you know, you just got to take a back seat and start coaching Horner, in my opinion. And it's nothing against Kipnis, but I mean, he's his numbers are declining significantly in recent years. To the point where it's just tanking his legacy, in my opinion, because he was really, really good at one point. Yeah. And as far as Hayward, I mean, he's I like Hayward. I actually like him a lot, and I'm he's just like a disappointment. So I don't trust him at all. I don't think he deserves the dart throw for me. <laughs> and at this point, I mean, he's really just a defensive specialist. He's always been really talented defensively. So for fantasy purposes, defensive numbers aren't uh, aren't paying the bills. That uh, is a fact. All right, I'm going to hop in. Any other notes on anyone else there, or you want to move over to the rotation? Um, Yeah, I mean, we talked about how Kipnis may be the second baseman and Horner also. Mm-hmm. Um, who do they have listed as, like, their bench-slash-utility fourth outfielder? Because Hap, Hap could play second base. I believe he had some time in second base last year also. Yeah, he I mean, actually so- has double, elig- double eligibility. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, Kipnis is, he hasn't really hit above 220 Mm -hmm. in almost three years, I believe. I could be wrong, but, I mean, his strikeout rate just keeps going up and up each year, and and it's very hard to believe because he's always been a high strikeout guy. So I could see him getting into some real big slumps to the point where they want to bring in Nico Horner up and just have him come in right away because that division's getting real tough. Yeah. You know, you you still got the Reds are going to, the Reds are going to make some noise this year. I think I mean, they could win the division. Oh, oh, me too. I think that division is definitely wide open, and we're not going to take anything away from the Cubs. You know, Rizzo, Bays, and Bryant—they're going to carry the offense into like potentially a wild card. But that back half could definitely, you know, scare some people and could ruin their wild card spot. Yeah, for sure, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of like uh, Ian Happ a little more this year. Is because when you look at their depth chart, I mean, there's really nobody here that makes you say, oh, you know, Ian Happ's going to lose at bats. Uh, that's the biggest thing for me, and I don't think he's really had that in his career yet. I don't think so either, and I think out of those three, I think he's going to get the more, the most playing time. For sure. So let's hop in. Yeah, actually, they have Steven Souza right now listed as their fourth outfielder. Uh, they also have Albert Elmora there, but. I mean, nobody that's going to be taking at-bats from him. So let's no, hop it's... over to the rotation then. Um, number yep. one is their ace, you Darvish. He is going <laughs> around pick 60 right now. So what are your thoughts on you this year? Uh, not enough consistency shown in previous years. Um, I'm passing. That is that is a high spot. I mean, we all know how much I love Soroka, and he's had one good year too. But we've seen Darvish in previous years. We've seen him become very inconsistent with a very high ERA. And, and his second half was definitely very impressive last year. But I, I've got to see more. Uh, he's just one of those players where he's in his 30s and he he was a highly touted uh, prospect. Up until now, he finally shows glimpse of, you know, potential again. So I, I, got, I got to weigh it out. That's too high. So I think that he... So he's going around uh, pitcher 18 right now. Um, actually, last year he was a top 10 pitcher. Uh, wow! Really? At, at the end know. of the year, yeah, he finished uh, actually number eight last year for uh, for pitchers. And over the course of his career, he's always had an elite K rate. You mentioned it already. His ERA has kind of been up and down throughout his career. 
I, I think a few times it's touched over four. For the most part, he's in that three and a half range. But I mean, his K rate is so I think he pitched about 180 innings or so last year, almost 230 strikeouts. You know, and I think that's really what people are paying for. Do I think it's a little early? Maybe a little bit, you know, I'd probably put him about 10 picks later than that. But even still, if he's the 18th pitcher off the board, I really don't think that's done reasonable. Um, so I, I personally like him in that spot, but I uh, he's definitely a risk. He's had injury issues as well. So he's not really going. I, I think if he didn't have that injury history, he would go much earlier. But um, I think you kind of pay for the risk a little bit there. Oh, uh, you do. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, agreed. I mean, you mentioned the 18th pitcher off. So say if you're in a basic 10-team league, and if he's the 18th starting pitcher off, that's your second starting pitcher you're paying for mm-hmm. as opposed to waiting later. And I'll just leave Soroka off of it. I'll, let's go with like a guy like Barrios, for example, mm-hmm. who I believe is going a couple rounds later. And, you know, he's shown glimpses of uh, potential and is much, yo- much younger. So he could definitely go the distance. And he's just another example of it. Or even, I mean, Clayton Kershaw has shown consistency. I mean, granted, he has an injury history too, but you know what you're going to get out of Kershaw. And even last year, he was definitely a pitcher too, in my opinion. It's just the name-based value, I think, what it comes down to. Yeah, Barrios is going about 25 picks later than Darvish, so yeah, it's pretty good value there. Um, the rest of the rotation, it's a little weak in my opinion. Um, Kyle Hendricks is listed as their number two starter right now. Uh, he's had a good spring until they canceled it, but he's been a guy. He's going pick 135 right now, which actually surprised me a little bit because I've always viewed him more as a, a guy that you stream, uh, in my opinion. He's always has a mid-range ERA. He has a pretty good whip, not a good K rate, but uh, I was surprised to see him going in that range. And in my opinion, I think that he's kind of like Soroka a little bit in the way that they pitch. I think Soroka's better, but, uh, you know, just low K guys, they're going to get you a, a good ERA, a decent whip, but I don't see a ton of upside with Hendricks. And, you know, he's a guy that I personally pass on. Same here. I mean, I'd pass on on myself. He's, you said it, just a typical streamer guy. And that's all. I mean, this, the rest of this rotation is weak and it could cost the Cubbies a whole a playoff spot unless they go out and sign whatever veterans left out there. But. Yeah. And that's why I'm surprised Hendricks is going to pick 135 ish just because, I mean, you're taking, we'll say your third, fourth starter somewhere, maybe fifth starter, depending how pitcher heavy you go. And I don't know, that seems high. If Kyle Hendricks was my third pitcher, I'd be a little nervous. <laughs> uh, I agree. Um, What's where's Luke Weaver of the Diamondbacks going? He's got to be going later or near there. Oh yeah, I, I think he. Last I looked, he was going around 180. Uh, and I would much rather have someone younger and more consistent like yep. a Luke Weaver, and I would take that to the bank anytime. Yeah, I think the reason Weaver goes that late only is because the injury history. Because when he is healthy, I mean, he pitches really well. It's just, can he get to a level where he's pitching 150, 160, 170 innings consistently? He hasn't done that yet, but yeah, he's a good dart throw at the end. Oh, for sure. And he's young. I believe he's only 25, 26. Yeah, I think 26, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm definitely taking that dart throw. And if you had a gun to my head, Hendricks or... uh, Weaver pick 120. I'm definitely going Weaver. I mean, I, I it's just a no-brainer for me, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, rest of the Cubs rotation, uh, we already mentioned it, but it's weak. Jose Quintana, uh, John yeah. Lester, Tyler Chatwood are the rest of their starting rotation. Only guy being drafted at all round pick 230 is John Lester. And, mm-hmm. and, I mean, he hasn't been good for a few years now. I think that's just name recognition, if anything else. Just people at the end of the draft going, oh, John Lester is available. It's like, yeah, he hasn't been good since, uh, you know, I, I was a child now. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, no real relevance to me for any of those guys. Yeah, I agree. Um, not real relevance or even fantasy. I mean, you said to yourself, you look at, oh, John Lester. Man, <laughs> I'm in a time machine going back to 2007. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. Like, no, I'm passing. I'll pass. I'll pass. And that was one of the things that's been interesting as we break down these teams a little bit is I've been looking at their farm systems a little, you know, when I see a rotation that's that week, I'm like, okay, hopefully you got some young prospects coming up and the compass farm system is super weak. 
So uh, realistically, if they don't make some moves in the next year or two here, I could see them slowly faltering as much as their even their lineup's not as strong. You know, they have the t few guys at the top of their lineup, but it's not mm -hmm. a very deep lineup. They don't really have any pitching depth. Um, a lot of their farm, si their farm system, not only is it weak, it really the, a lot of them are young. So whenever you're below double A, you really never know how those guys are going to develop. So they have a ton of question marks, and I could see the Cubs kind of imploding in a few years. Oh, for sure. And there was a lot of talks, you know, in the offseason. And, well, yeah, in the offseason last year about trading Chris Bryant for prospects. Mm -hmm. Like, in a way, I mean, I guess you're just, like, waving the white flag. But that's a team that you're – that's that's a thing you're going to need. Yep. So, I mean, like you said, the Cubs are going to implode any year now. It's just a matter of when they trade their Bryant, Rizzo, or even Bays for some top prospects. I'm not yeah. saying trade all three, but you're definitely going to have to make some kind of move for the future. Yeah, yeah. otherwise it's it's going to be uh, go bad poorly quickly. But uh, yeah. their closer this year is going to be Craig Kimbrell. He's going around pick 126. I mean, that's really the range that closers like that are going anywhere from pick 100 to 130. You start to see a real run on closers. You know, the Cubs will be a solid team this year. He'll get his opportunities. You know, he's been pretty successful for a while now. So, I mean, if you're looking for a safe closer pick, yeah, I have no problems with it. But we've talked at length before. I don't really take closers in that range. I don't either. And we've said it multiple times on previous uh, episodes. Saves only, yes, I would take Kimbrell at 126 anytime. But if it's holds and saves, you know, I'm just going to take a utility or fourth outfielder or whatever it may be. Yep, I agree. Uh, and then we'll finish up. We'll talk a minute about their farm system. I kind of mentioned it already. It's very weak. Uh, MLB.com currently has them ranked as the 23rd farm system in the majors. So, and a lot of it, I already mentioned, really low-level talent. They have a few guys, Braylon Marquez, um, Brennan Davis. Those are guys in low A, high A right now. Some potential, but in my opinion, too early still to tell if they're going to turn out to be anything. Uh, they only have two guys who look like they're going to be playing in the majors this year. Uh, one is Al Abdur uh, Aloze. Uh, he's their sixth prospect right now. I looked a little bit at his minor league numbers. He has a very high K rate. Uh, the only reason he'll probably break through once the season starts at some point is because their rotation's so weak. So it, he's in AAA right now, and if he has a good start to the season, he'll probably sneak into that rotation. And you know, I'd keep an eye on him maybe as a streamer in the beginning just because of his K rate. Um, other guy we already mentioned, Nico Horner. Uh, he, I think he's going to end up getting most of the time at second base. Uh, Kipnis, I believe he's 35 now. When I looked it up, he was much older than I realized. I said, man, you know, and you mentioned it previously, but he used to be one of the top three second basemen taken for a few years. And uh, But that ship has sailed, so I expect him to be more of a, a bench player at this point. Oh, yeah, I agree. You know, at one point in uh, fantasy baseball before it got um, bigger, you were taking your Pedroyas, mm -hmm. your Canoes, or your Kipnises yeah. from, like, you know, for like a good five years from the 2000s to the, like 2010 to like 2015. And then, you know, all of a sudden it's just like, wow. But in a way, second base has actually gotten deeper, surprisingly, than previous years. Because previous years, it has always been really, really shallow. Yeah. And it seems like it took a while for like the next best second baseman to really break through, I think. so. Yeah, and yeah. I would say this year you have a really strong, you know, seven or eight. And we're going to be doing a series on this soon. Um, but we have a really strong, I'd say eight second baseman after that, I think it drops off really quickly, but if you grab okay. one of those eight guys, I think you're pretty safe. Oh, I agree. And I think, you know, for a good five of them, five or six, you can make a case for them being like number one. I don't think yeah. there's a really true number one second baseman out there. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Uh, any other thoughts on the Cubs or, uh, you think they're going to win the division or you think the Reds are going to take them over this year? <sighs> Uh, you know what? It looks good on paper for the Reds, but we've seen teams in the past, multiple sports, where they looked great on paper, but you know, you put the paper on the field and it just implodes. And you don't get a full season this year either. It's tough. Yeah, you know what? I guess so. I mean, you know, the Reds, they're just, their pitching depth is significantly better. Mm -hmm. Their offense is, the whole team is significantly better. And 
they they just have to. Yeah, no, and I I think the Reds are going to win the division. I think the I think the the Cubs will be right in it though. I think they'll be kind of neck and neck. It's not no one's going to run away. You mentioned that earlier, but um, I think this division is kind of interesting this year. You have some clear bottom feeders with the Pirates and the Brewers, but uh, I think and the Cardinals are always one of those teams that every year I look at them on paper, I'm like, eh, they're okay. And then they always outperform every year, and they always seem to sneak themselves into the playoffs. <laughs> so I never count the Cardinals out either. <laughs> Oh, you can't. I mean, especially about that kid Flaherty, he's going to be something special. So yeah, he's he's one of the best. But I think that's all we have on the Cubs right now. So thanks yeah. everybody for watching. Uh, this has been another installment of the MLB mini series for the Fantasy Holics podcast. If you don't already like us on Facebook at Fantasy Holics, on Twitter we are at Fantasy Holics One, and then make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. So uh, once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Boom.